Welcome to the second instalment of our 2014-15 season review. This week we tackle September. The Shakers went into the month six in the league after starting August well with three wins, one draw and one loss in the league. The team started the month with a 0-0 stalemate away at Wickham Wanderers. Wickham went into the match with a long injury list but still managed to grind out a point against a Shakers side that didn't ever truly get going. David Flickcroft felt his side could have won it in the first half, but they deserved a clean sheet. You know, I'm gutted that we, we're not open and, and, and to the advantage, you know, first half. I think second half, it was one of them real toss of the coin game, you know, um, and the chance that they've had at the end is one of them where, you, you know, your heart's in your mouth. Uh, whether it's gone over or whether it's not, I'm not too sure, but certainly, uh, that one moment in the game and Cameron and Pablo Mills' performance tells me that you know we deserve the clean sheet and we've got a clean sheet and that's what has pleased me more than anything about the uh, today's performance. The Shakers were at their very best against Carlisle United away from home, passing the ball around brilliantly giving the Cumbrians very little space to have a say on the game. The game started very evenly in the first half with the teams going into a half-time 0-0. However, Danny Rose started off the scoring straight after the break. Craig Jones then doubled Berry's lead on 59 minutes before substitute Ryan Lowe made it 3-0 with a goal 10 minutes before the end. Ryan Lowe's goal during the game was his 50th for the club during two stints. On this achievement, he said, uh, "Yeah, obviously, you know, proud to have scored 50 league goals for Berry. I uh, was proud to help my teammates get three points today. It was obviously a frustrating couple of days for me not being in the team, but you know, you have to get on with it. Mac, the gaffer makes the decisions. You've got to be strong enough and, and man enough to take them on the chin. And, and when your chance comes along, you've got to, you know, show them what you're capable of." Next up saw the Shakers come against Stevenage at the JD Stadium. Borough started the game well with Adam Marriott grabbing the lead for the visitors on the 10th minute. However, it didn't take long for Berry to get back on level terms, with Ryan Lowe firing a free kick into the top corner. Craig Jones grabbed the lead for the Shakers just after half-time. Substitute Ryan Johnson was sent off for Stevenage just before full-time to help Berry achieve the three points. Flickcroft felt his side showed a high level of fitness to get the win. You know, when I look at uh, the performance levels, the fitness levels, after uh, such a difficult uh, away travel and performance on Saturday, it makes it even more special because, uh, you know, I thought Saturday's performance was outstanding. Uh, but tonight's just top that. You know, a Graham Wesley team comes to try and dominate you and bully you, and uh, they couldn't get anywhere near us uh, in any aspect of the play. Uh, we ran all over them, we ran through them, we ran round them, we ran over them, we passed through them, passed over them. Our precision and work uh, was, was outstanding and in every aspect of our play 
it was pure dominance from, from the start of the game till, uh, till the very end. High flying Burton Albion were the next visitors at the JD Stadium. Berry looked brilliant throughout the match with a dominant display that worried the Brewers from start to finish. However, it took until half time for Daniel Nardiello to open up with the scoring on the 48 minutes. Ryan Lowe grabbed his third goal in as many games to double the lead. With Nardiello making it three on 66 minutes before Jacob Blythe got a consolation goal on 88 minutes for Burton. On the game, Danny Nardiello said. It was nice to get an early goal, uh, which meant we were in control of the game, really, and I just think we kicked on from there. I think as soon as we got that first goal, it was just they had to you know, go for it a little bit more, which mm -hmm. opened things up a bit more for us, and luckily we got three goals and killed the game off. The last game of the month saw the Shakers travel to Exeter to take on the Grecians at St James's Park. The home team started the game well, with Matt Grimes taking the lead within five minutes. Berry spent the rest of the half probing their hosts, but young goalkeeper Christy Pym played well, denying Berry an equaliser until Tom Soares finally grabbed it on 59 minutes. However, Jimmy Keohane got the Grecians the three points on the 83rd minute. After the match, David Flickcroft said. And I keep saying to this team, if we can't win it, don't lose it. And they've not been able to do that today. But, uh, you know, our quality work going forward has to be better than what it's been today. Berry finished the month with three wins, one draw and one loss, which helped the team climb to third in the league. September was also a month in which we lost lifetime supporter, former director, former chairman and former president of Berry Football Club, Fred Mason, following a long illness. Fred had also been a pivotal figurehead during the club's darkest days of administration and financial woes, but along with John Smith and help from Neville Neville, steered the club into safety.